Hello. So I come here with a big life update. So to start, um, yeah, my life hasn't been exactly very stable recently. I mean, recently in the last year. So I came back from China after seven years of being in China. I went to Poland in June. I found a job almost uh, immediately. And I worked for Allegro for three months. And basically I loved the job. I loved people who worked there. And the only downside of the job was the fact that it was in Warsaw and I was living in Łódź, which is two, sometimes two and a half, three hours away. And I had to be in office twice a week, which I couldn't do. I, I could, but I didn't want to. It was too much. Imagine working eight hours, then you have two on top of that to go there, two to go back. My dog was home alone at that time with the cat. I didn't want to do that. I gave lots of suggestions of how to solve it and I heard no. So after my probation period, I left. And then my new job, which I also love, um, I work there six months now. And yeah, basically it's less flexible than my Allegro work, my, uh, my Allegro job. So in Allegro, I, I always started at seven and I finished at three, which gave me time to go to the gym and cook and see my family. I lived very close to my mom. I would just sometimes run through the forest. It was a 20, 25 minute run or was it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> or it was 10 minutes by bike. No, it was a bit longer. I think it was around 30 minutes, maybe 40. Um, and yeah, I had I had time. I had a boyfriend who was in Germany at the time. And I would also call him after the gym or after cooking or I just felt like I had time. And then I moved to Germany after I quit my Allegro job because I got a job here. Uh, and the job here, as I said, was much less flexible. Which meant that yesterday I got home at 7. I had no time to do anything. And yeah, tomorrow I will work from home for half a day. Then I have to be in the office for a meeting. And I've been like the fir first uh, in the first week of May, I had a end of probation period talk where I basically voiced that I need more flexibility. I know that in the company where I work, other departments have a great degree of flexibility and we don't and basically asked if it will change. And my supervisor took it, uh, thought about it. He said, let's schedule a next meeting next week. So next week we had another end of probation period talk where he said, listen, nothing will change. He told me nothing will change. We need to be available at these times because we work closely with clients and you need to be reachable. So I was like, oh, okay, tough. So he said, think about it. Let's talk about it next week. So on my third uh, end of probation period talk, I came up with an idea. I said, hey, listen, what if I work one hour less every day? So 35 instead of 40 hours, it will give me a greater flexibility. I could finish at three or at four, somehow manage my time around it. I would keep the amount of work, just work five, five hours less. And he, the supervisor, he, I, I really like him. I have nothing against him. It's just, I understand these are the work conditions. So he said, okay, I appreciate that you have this idea. I appreciate the commitment because what you show that you want to find a way so that you and I are both happy. I can see you're not happy. And if you cannot work the way we work, maybe this is not the best place for you. So I said, okay, please consider if I could work less, 
I know that in other departments in the company, people work less. I have a very good friend in the company. I, I made a friend uh, in another department. Her name is Sonia. <clears throat> and Sonia is working... Um, she Yeah, she's working... Um, we call it like reduced time. And she asked her supervisor recently if she could start... Um, working less from August and her supervisor said yeah sure you can even start now if you need to if you don't feel like you can manage your your personal life or you need more time you can even start now so yeah she started and I was like great that's that's why I asked and my boss said that he will think about it and he came back to me last Friday and he said, sorry, we cannot do this. Um, you're, you need to be reachable. And you need to work as much as everyone else. In the future, there will be more work, not less work. So you have to work full time and there will be more work. So you really need to work 40 hours. And he said, well knowing that you will not be happy with it we want to avoid the negativity in the group so yeah let's schedule a meeting with the big boss so yeah so the boss of my boss um and yeah we will basically um yeah talk about how to finish this probation period and how what are the steps for me of to to leave the company so at first I panicked a little because somehow I'm out of work even though this is what I wanted because it's really it's really tough for me to work a 40 hour job that is this demanding because it's not only about it being 40 hours it's also about the rules we have in the in the company, in, in my department, it's not the whole company. It's actually not even my department, it's just my team. We have certain hours when we can start, certain amount of breaks we can take, we have certain core hours, we have to be reachable. Uh, we are told, for example, I we, we, we had a, a long talk with my supervisor about this. So he said, yeah, we I know these are the rules. This is what he said, I know these are the rules. You could start at 7.30, but what's the point? I can I then look at you if I, if I see that you start work at 7.30. I know you can't reach the clients until 9 o'clock, so what are you doing? I expect you to start at 9. I expect you to finish late. At 6, you can reach clients until 6. And then we can come to the office twice a week, but he expects me to come four times a week because that's how you learn, that's how you know your team that's that's how you grow as a as a good worker so basically the rules are not what it's expected of you and the little flexibility meant for me that i cannot go to the gym i live one hour away from the office i couldn't go to the gym i couldn't exercise my hobby is to to record videos for youtube um walking videos or exercise videos and i've been doing these videos for so long and first i was doing them in china so for wechat and i was uploading them i was also uploading them on instagram stories later when after my first job after allegro job i was post i started doing it on youtube and i really loved it and those whole six months that i've worked for this company i felt like okay I don't do gym anymore, I don't do videos anymore, I basically don't do any of my hobbies anymore. I put on weight, I put on a lot of weight. This morning I checked and to this day it is 13 kilograms. So I changed my size by two sizes, I'm two sizes bigger. So I don't feel like myself because I can't do any of the things that I like. I don't look like myself. I look at myself in the mirror and, you know, I'm, it's, it's not my face. It's not my, my body. I can't wear the clothes I like because all my clothes are too small. I had to buy new clothes that are kind of not like my clothes. They don't feel like my clothes. 
I am not in my country because right now I'm in Germany. <clears throat> Sorry. And I have so much love for China. China is my home and I'm very homesick. And I know I can't go back. All my friends are in China. I have no friends here yet. Okay, I have Sonia. I have some really good friends from work, friends that I love. I have two Italian friends I, I love so much. And they are very supportive and they basically are the only people who know about this from work. There's also MV. MV also knows. Um, so I have a support system at work. In the six months I made some friends at work. So I can't say I have no friends. But also these friends I meet at work. So we are not there yet to meet after work. Uh, I'm having a barbecue party in two weeks. So they will come and that will be the first time we don't meet at work. And it will be also the first time that I don't work anymore because on probation period in Germany, it looks like you have six months of probation and then two weeks notice. So basically I have the big meeting tomorrow. So that's why I said the official, I have official life change on Thursday. Tomorrow's Thursday, today's Wednesday. So from tomorrow, uh, the notice period is two weeks on probation. Yeah, and uh, this is my big news. So I will leave my work and I will be unemployed. And first, I, as I said, I panicked a little and I was a bit scared. I told my boyfriend and, you know, people usually when I, I told my neighbors, people usually tend to react. Oh, my gosh, what will you do? Uh, will you find another job? What job do you want? Do you have other options? And it stressed me out. It really stressed me out. I went on internet. I started looking for jobs. I applied for some. And I got an interview. Then yesterday I had another interview for this position. But while I had time to think and to really consider it, I realized that changing this job that I love with people I love to another job that is everything that this job is, 40 hours also, some flexibility, no, I, I can't say there is more flexibility, but without the people. So it's like trading something for something that's the same, which makes no sense. So after I had some time to think, I think I'm going to um, take a break from corporate life. That's obviously um, not for me for the moment. I want to find myself again. I want to go to the gym. We signed up for the gym, I think one week ago exactly. And I want to go to the gym. I want to go for long walks. In China, I would always go for a long walk in the morning and then with my neighbor, Megan. We would also go in the afternoon and I just loved it. Um, so yeah, I want to go for walks. I want to start making videos again. I want to somehow get used to the fact that I'm in Germany because when we are when I arrived in Germany I moved in with my boyfriend in the center of the city I didn't know any people everything was closed but I had no use of it or for it because I was at home I finished late went home we cook or watch a movie walk the dog go to sleep boring life <laughs> Sorry, I, I know a lot of people have this kind of life. But, you know, we spend one third of our lives at work. So not only that it's not flexible, it needs to be good. It, you need to feel like you're doing something that matters. And for me at the moment, I feel like maybe I should do something that matters for me and to work for myself. So I will take a little break and I will try to be self-employed after that. I also bought a car and I am such a bad driver. I have so much anxiety. I, when I drive, my palms sweat, my, my mouth is dry. I, I open the window, I get super hot. I'm just so bad. I got my license a few months ago. I started driving and I am just, I'm so bad. So maybe I should focus on this as well. Um, I have some ideas of what I would like to do. And I, will, I have some things that I'd like to try. 
and yeah i think that's that's it for the update um um yeah i'm out of out of a job i will focus on myself i will make more videos and do what i love and i will hopefully uh learn how to drive a car ah but uh, it's not easy and the drivers here are so <laughs> impatient i mean i understand that i am slow and maybe sometimes i stole the car and i cannot <laughs> it happened once that i was on the red light waiting for it to change and there was a car in front of me and i couldn't i i, I couldn't go so the car just turned off and I tried to start it and I saw the line behind me and they were beeping and I got stressed. <laughs> and when I started again, the, the, the light changed to green, so uh, to red, to red, of course. So I understand. I, I don't do that anymore. So I see the progress. But highway, for example, pff, Jesus, we are driving. My boyfriend's like, you have to go to, to the fifth gear. I'm like, I can't. I'm I really, I, I did eventually, but can't believe that driving so hard. It's so many things to to do and to think about. And when you think how dangerous it is and how much danger you cause, but not knowing how to drive. And then you, you know that you're not the only one. Everyone started like this. And there's lots of other new drivers. Oh, by the way, I bought stickers. <laughs> I put it in the front window uh, and the back window. It says, new driver, be patient. <laughs> and I think it helped. It helped really a lot. So they don't beep anymore. Um, sometimes when I'm on the on one lane, I see that there is a column of car. Eight, uh, of cars, eight, nine, ten cars on, on, on the next lane. Zero cars in my lane. So obviously it's working. Uh, also, this doesn't stress me out too much. I know that if I can't start, the car behind me can see the sticker. So hopefully um, I will get better and yeah, um, I'm going to be out of work in two weeks and I'm going to make lots of videos. I will learn German. My German is terrible, really bad. Somehow I speak Chinese. Chinese, I feel it's super easy. There is no grammar. You can just learn it in three months. I think if you really put your mind to Chinese, you could learn it in three months. But if you put your mind to German, you cannot learn it in three months. Really. But because I speak Chinese, it makes me hopeful. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think I can manage German at some point. It's just so hard. And people also realize that, oh, she doesn't speak German. Let's speak English with her. So it's not easy. I, actually, my big life update is that life is not easy. I am a mess. I am very worried about the future. I will find a way. I will be okay eventually. Um, it's also a bit stressful that everyone is worried for me and that stresses me out. I don't know if you know what I mean. But somehow them worrying about me puts a pressure on me to prove that I'm okay. But I have savings, I live with my boyfriend, I will be okay. Um, I have support, um, my family is just very close and I'm in the country but very close. I could drive there in eight hours and be there and if I need to, I'll just not drive to my mom but somehow maybe fly. <laughs> maybe one day drive and just cry and... I'll be okay. Whatever happens, you know, it's life. And these many changes that I've had in the past year in my life just showed me that nothing, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter if you get a job, if you lose a job, if you get a job, if you leave the job. Just, we have one life. And I feel like leaving this job is the right thing to do. I feel I was doing great in this position. I proved to myself that I can really work hard. And I want to work hard for myself. 
so I will find out what to do next. And thank you for all the uh, guesses on Instagram. <laughs> I'm not pregnant. I'm not moving to another country. I didn't get a new job. What are, what are the answers? I didn't break up with my boyfriend. I didn't get engaged with my boyfriend. I'm not getting married. I am not... What was, what was it? What was it? I can't remember all the answers. I'm not getting a new pet. That's it. My update is I am out of work and I am going to figure it out. <laughs> and that was a long video. I'm so sorry. I, you don't have to watch it. I'll just write in the description, description box, <laughs> out of work, life update. <laughs> okay. Thank you for listening. If you did, I know a few of my friends for sure did. If you did, please call me. <laughs> Maybe I need a phone call from a uh, from a friendly friendly face video call them. <laughs>